Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News. The Freedom of Information Bill is here at last. We've got the details straight ahead on Our News. An update on when we can expect boundaries for the next general election to be finalized. Officials prepare to roll out phase two of national health insurance. Find out what that entails straight ahead. The Genesis Junk New Organization gets a helping hand its first year competing in the A category. Spreading joy and peace in the Fox Hill community. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, amid concerns about government transparency and the public's right to be informed, the revamped Freedom of Information bill was finally tabled in the House of Assembly today. Minister responsible for the bill, Jerome Fitzgerald, noted it's been a long time coming, but the country now has a FOIA it can be proud of. Dana Smith reports. The long-promised and long-awaited Freedom of Information bill was finally tabled in Parliament this morning. Noting the process has taken years to reach this point, Fitzgerald said if you're going to do something, it's worth it to do it well. Nearly three weeks since hundreds of protesters marched down Bay Street, demanding, among other things, that the government table the much-delayed Freedom of Information bill, today it finally happened. The Bahamians have much to be proud of as we finally have a long-awaited Freedom of Information Bill which is relevant and adheres to international best standards based on our system of parliamentary democracy. Its tabling comes after years of national discussion about the need for more transparency and accountability in governance. Taking note of the commentary regarding the time it has taken to table the bill, Fitzgerald noted the FOI legislation was inherited from the previous administration. In the opinion of many, the bill was rushed. It did not have public consultation and was woefully short of in short of the international best standards that it should have been. Fitzgerald said upon reviewing suggestions, a committee was formed, tasked with the job of perfecting the legislation. He said the bill working committee embarked on an aggressive public consultation campaign and provided opportunities for the public to be active participants in the process. However, he found himself disappointed by the low engagement. Mr. Speaker, one would have thought that given the importance of this bill and the noise that we continue to hear in the market regarding the Freedom of Information Bill, that these meetings would have been oversubscribed and we would have had far more persons attending town hall meetings or even sending in recommendations and comments. Sadly, Mr. Speaker, that was not the case. Fitzgerald noted he intentionally excluded himself from the process as he didn't want to create the perception that the bill was politically biased. He added, this is merely the beginning, as once the bill is passed, the public will have to educate themselves on the provision of the Freedom of Information Bill. Reporting for Our News, I'm Dana Smith. Well, with only a few months until the 2017 general election, the Boundaries Commission has not yet finished its work. Speaker of the House of Assembly, Dr. Kendall Major, announced today the commission informed him its report should be ready at the first sitting of the House next year. The Boundaries Commission has not finished its work, and a newly appointed member uh, for St. Anne's will certainly be brought up to speed and it is our intention to work during the Christmas recess, if necessary, and to place ourselves in the position to table and debate the report at the first sitting of Parliament in January 2017. In other news, officials at the National Health Insurance Secretariat announcing today that the second phase of NHI will launch next month. This phase of NHI will involve the enrollment of primary health care providers who officials claim are warming up to NHI. Jasmine Brown has the details. Officials from the NHI Secretariat said today that phase two of the project involves enrolling those hundreds of primary health care providers. The January 2017 introduction comes nearly nine months behind its original April 2016 implementation date. But days before the rollout, Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez said it would be delayed for six months. Today, NHI project manager Dr. Delon Brennan said they are finally ready to move forward. I'm very happy to stand before you today as we encourage people to be NHI ready. 
for enrollment in 2017. To initiate phase two of NHI Bahamas enrollment in January 2017, healthcare facilities will be able to start the process of signing up to be primary care providers under NHI Bahamas. While there has been some pushback to NHI by some healthcare professionals, Brennan says many of them are now prepared to sign on. He adds that of the more than 100 primary healthcare providers, a significant number of physicians who attended indicated they planned on signing up to become primary healthcare providers. The physician providers who are actually in the sessions and have been part of the actual discussions have actually responded very positively. Um, as we noted earlier, in our exit surveys, 70% of them have, have responded to say not only are they accepting of the fee structure, but they are willing to sign up and be a part of National Health Insurance Bahamas as we launch and go forward. Phase one of the scheme was launched in January 2016 with the National Insurance Board facilitating the registration for NHI. The NIB Smart Card is being used as an identification card. Permanent Secretary for NHI Peter DeVoe Isaacs said so far more than 240,000 people qualify for NHI. More than 240,000 Bahamians have their smart cards and are NHI ready. Um, however, there still remains approximately 100,000 Bahamians who do not have their smart cards and are therefore not in a position to enroll in NHI if they don't do so very soon. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, President of the Bahamas Doctors Union, Dr. Charles Arthur Clark, says after several recent consultations with the National Health Insurance Secretariat, he believes NHI is now on the right track. You're never going to actually have everything met, but certainly it, given the greater economic situation in the country, um, and mindful of the need to actually offer health care to people who are marginalized and disadvantaged in this economically challenging time. I think um, this is a great initiative and certainly it will be a part and support in this, its endeavor. Earlier this year, Clark outlined financial concerns facing doctors who are considering enrolling as health care providers for NHI. He also expressed concern over what he called a lack of proper consultation, but he says that has now changed. Be very fair and honest to them. They have been, they have actually involved us to a significant extent. Um, whether the information is actually percolating and getting down to those who are truly on the ground, on the floor, is another issue. Dr. Clark says moving forward, he and the doctors union will be working more closely with the NHI secretariat. Still to come on our news, what government is doing to address oil leaks at the Clifton Pier power station. Genesis Junk New Organization gets a monetary injection to keep the group flowing and Freedom Park in Fox Hill is filled with a joyful noise. That's coming up when our news returns.